Hey, I'm Jay with Evanex, and today we're going to be performing a brake service on this Tesla Model 3. Once you have all your brake components off, this is also a great opportunity to swap out your wheel hubs if needed, and you can check out that video right here. Now let's see what tools we'll need to complete this service. Right, the tools you'll need for this brake service are pretty simple. You need a ratchet and a torque wrench, as well as a 21 millimeter, a 14 millimeter, and a 10 millimeter socket. A open end 14 millimeter wrench is also helpful for the rear caliper to hold the slide pins. On top of that, you'll need an E18 external torque and an impact driver with a hammer. And for the front calipers, they have slide pins that hold the brake pads and the uh, clip in place. So you'll need a punch for those. And if you have any difficulties like we did, you might also need an air hammer. Let's get started. All right, now if you're just replacing your pads, um, you would just knock out these two pins and be able to get rid of the pads and the spring. Uh, but however, we're going to be replacing the rotor as well, so we're going to have to remove our entire caliper. But again, if you're just doing this, the pads, just use a punch and a hammer, knock out these pins, and then your pads and spring will come out here. Remove the caliper. We're just going to remove these two bolts, which are 18 e torques. And the Tesla directions do call for you to remove your brake line. However, you don't have to. Um, but the issues that we ran into with these calipers, which you'll see in a minute, required us to remove our brake line, so we will have to bleed these later. To remove the rotor, we're gonna remove our set screw. This one is a Phillips head. However, um, you may also have 10 millimeter bolts, which we're actually going to be using to replace it. So this is an impact driver, and it is very helpful for these without stripping them. Now that the impact driver did most of the work, just use a screwdriver, get the rest of the way off. All right, generally speaking, uh, if you're just replacing your pads, you would not have to remove the whole caliper. You would just punch out these pins, pull the pads and the clip out, put new ones in, and put new replacement pins in. Um, an issue we are running into with these, because we live in the Rust Belt of Ohio, is that these have been corroded and these pins are now seized in place. When we try to punch them out, they're bending within here. Um, so we, through some research, we found out that this is kind of a common problem if you've never changed your brakes or you have a lot of a higher mileage car, a lot of corrosion. Uh, so we're gonna show you how we're gonna deal with it. Um, and essentially we're gonna bend this clip out of the way since we're gonna replace it. We're going to cut these pins and pound them out um, either with our punch or if this doesn't work, then an air hammer. Uh, and then we're going to definitely use some anti-seize on the new pins so we don't run into this problem again. We've got our clip out. You can see these pads now move freely. So we're going to move them out of the way. We're going to use our angle grinder and we're going to cut these as flush as we can. Also leaving a little bit of gap so we can punch those out. And don't forget your PPE. <laughs> you wanna be really careful not to damage your caliper while you're doing this. pads out of the way. Now something I noticed when cutting this one is this obviously moves freely. So it's up here where the pin was getting seized and that's on both of these. So now we're going to have to punch these out. I'm going to first attempt it with our punch and a hammer because uh, you really don't want to have to use the air hammer if you don't have to. But sometimes things don't work out as planned. These aren't moving, 
and something that we ran into on this one is if we hit these too hard they will start to mushroom and then they're stuck on both sides which we don't want um, so I think we are going to have to air hammer these out unfortunately hey it moved now we will reinstall our rotor and we will torque down our set screw to five newton meters. Okay. All right, now we're gonna reinstall our caliper. We've compressed our pistons. We're gonna reinstall our hardware and we will tighten our hardware down to 94 newton meters. Now we have our caliper installed so we don't run into the same issue of not being able to get the pins out. We're gonna clean out these little holes. And something to also note is Tesla actually recommends that you clean your brakes every so often. And we have one of those uh, brake cleaner kits available at evanx.com. And you can get that down in the link in the description. Look at all that gunk coming up off of there. Now. We'll throw some anti-seize on our pins and we will get our pads, the clip and our pins all installed. We'll get these started. I have added anti-seize. We'll get our clip into place. Start the first one. Second one. Now those are pretty much where they need to go. Now I'll just use a flat punch to send these the rest of the way in. Caliper, pad, and spring are now installed. All right, to start for the rear brakes, we have to put it into service mode so that it releases the e-brake. To do so, you go into your vehicle menu, go to software, you tap and hold model three. When it gives you that little flash, you can let go. And the password is service. It's going to give you a prompt. Caution and proper use of service mode could result in loss of vehicle operation, permanent vehicle damage, or serious injury. We understand, enter. We are now in service mode. To get into gateway mode, we're going to simultaneously press the brake and the right turn signal for 10 seconds. Now that we're in gateway mode, we'll go to chassis and then brakes and then EPB service mode. Hit run. Now we have successfully released the rear emergency brake. We're in EPB service mode and we can start on the rear brakes. All right, next we're gonna remove our caliper from the caliper bracket. This is 14 millimeter. Use our caliper hanger and hang this safely out of the way somewhere. Now we can remove our pads and our kit comes with new clips. So we're gonna get rid of the clips as well. Be careful, these can sometimes be sharp. Now we will reuse our E18 Torx and remove the caliper bracket. Now that the caliper bracket is off, we will remove our set screw and pull the rotor. 
Our set screw on the rear is a 10 millimeter. New rotor. We'll install the caliper bracket. We'll install the caliper. We'll be done. All right, we got our piston compressed. We got our pads in place. Put our caliper on, get our slider bolts in, and these will be torqued down to 26 and a half Newton meters. And the rear on this side's done. Overall, this brake service was pretty simple. However, the issues that we had with the pins, we highly recommend getting the cleaning kit, which will be linked down in the description, and cleaning your brakes at the recommended Tesla service intervals. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and check back for more EV content.